Um, and you obviously have been working a lot with UNICEF and other anti-bullying organizations. Uh, you've been a social influencer of sorts in this world. What made you want to become proactive um, with these social causes? So for me, I, I do a lot of work with PACER because I got into YouTube in 2009 and I was 12 years old when I started. But I got into YouTube because I was being bullied and I was very insecure at the time and I didn't really know how to handle um, being treated in a poor way when you know that you didn't do anything because of it and, and, and not knowing the reason why. And YouTube for me was kind of my outlet when I was going through all of this. And I would say it was a solid year that it, it stemmed from just kind of one issue that led into all of these other issues of just feeling very down and, and just having a very dark point in my life. And I was able to turn it around by being creative and posting videos online, which was also very weird because I was such a shy kid growing up also. So I remember people would find out I was making videos and they were like, in life. Because in that moment when I was being bullied, all I wanted was for it to end. And I didn't understand why this was happening to me and I just wanted it to be over and I didn't get it. But also, had that not happened to me, I wouldn't have, I probably wouldn't have started making videos. So my life would be very different. Mm. So I think, just spreading the message of how a dark situation can bring you to something that was kind of meant for you. Um, and ob so obviously, creatively is how you dealt with this situation. And I was wondering what, so for people who are dealing with this today, what advice would you, or what advice would you give people that not only are dealing with it today, but also want to sort of deal with it in the same way that you did and try to create online content and sort of showcase themselves and you know create a positive image for themselves through their own content? What advice would you give them? That, that want to get into social media? Yeah. Or I would say find what's most authentic to you and do whatever that is. Because that's the thing now, is when I got into social media, when I got into YouTube, it was kind of before it was a thing. And so I had to deal with all of the like, oh, that's so cute that you make videos. That's adorable. Um, but I wasn't doing it for success. So I think that's the thing. If you go into it with, I want a career out of this, you might take a path that's not necessarily what your passion is. And I think, I'm grateful that I started when I was young because I was so young that I wasn't thinking about any of that. And I was just doing what felt good. And that was, you know, I do lifestyle stuff and, and I kind of add in a lot of things that I'm passionate about and that I love. And that's what brings me the most happiness. I was never too focused on how much is my channel growing, um, how many views do I have, all of that. Because I think when you focus on that, although, Obviously, you know, you, you want people to see it, but if that's completely driving everything that you make, then you might not be as happy because you're more focused on what do I need to do to get people to watch it instead of what's going to challenge me creatively. Right. And so what do you think is, uh, where do you draw your inspiration from today now that it's sort of this, that sort of dark period in your life is kind of behind you, where do you find that inspiration now? For the videos? Yeah. Uh, I kind of get inspiration from everywhere. I think that's what I love about my channel is that, and just everything that I do on social media, even if it's not YouTube, it's just kind of my life. Mm -hmm. And you can see over, I've been on for maybe nine years now, you can see how I've actually grown up. If you watch my first video, I don't recommend it. Um, <laughs> it's still there right. because I feel like I can't delete it at this point, <laughs> but it's pretty embarrassing. Right. And. I was awkward, I didn't have like the right equipment, like I didn't have a tripod, I had books, I didn't have lighting, I had like my windows, and I was super quiet. Mm -hmm. I also wore glasses like all the time, but I didn't want to wear them in my videos, so if you notice that I'm squinting, that's why, mm -hmm. like I couldn't see anything. Uh, so you can see kind of the progression of how I've grown up and how I've changed as an individual on YouTube. And I think that's what my, that's how I would describe it. Like I do beauty and fashion and all of these things, uh, but life inspires what I do because it's all just who I am. Um, well, you have so many highlights in your career, so much of what you've done, but I think probably the biggest one is uh, interviewing President Obama, which was a big deal after his uh, State of the Union speech. Um, how, how did you, how did that happen? That it's really my, impressive. Yeah, you know, Google was like, hey, do you want to interview the president? I was like, why? What? <laughs> Me? Me? I, I was shocked. I was like, are you guys sure? You guys trust me. It was amazing. It, it was one of those experiences where I feel like it was all a dream, and it, I, it didn't hit me until I was walking back to my hotel room, and I was like, 
I was sitting with the president. What? Yeah. It was so nerve wracking. I've never been so nervous that my lips were shaking. And I was holding my, like, holding my body because I was vibrating. And I didn't want him to see that I was shaking this hard because I was so nervous. We actually had a rehearsal the, the day before the actual interview with like a fake Obama just to kind of <laughs> go over all of our questions. Because I had like a decent amount of questions. Did he, did he do the voice too? Did he no, the, the no, whole spiel? He, didn't, no. he didn't commit. But <laughs> I got so nervous even when the fake Obama came up to me for the rehearsal. I was like, oh my gosh, it's him. And I was like, oh wait, no, it's not. Uh, I think it's just, you know, it's a lot of pressure. And it was a live interview. But I was shocked. He was so easy to talk to. And... Uh, it was like a once in a lifetime experience. So I'm really grateful that I got to sit down and speak with him and, and ask him some of my questions. It was amazing. Yeah, I mean, I gotta say, you didn't seem nervous at all. You seemed very That's relaxed. What people were telling you were me, like, like, yeah, this. hey, what's up? It's, you know, it's Barack. You know, yeah, that's yeah, how you, yeah, had that, like, <laughs> you had that my whole. My buddy, my pal. Yeah, and it's, so, so it came off really natural, and it was a great interview, honestly. Thank um, you. But how did it feel that, um, you know, President Obama believes that your impact on, um, on, bull on anti bullying has been more. That's, uh, that's him. <laughs> that's him coming down now. Um, uh, how did it? Yeah. <laughs> how did it? Um, how did it feel to hear that he believes that your work in anti-bullying has been more impactful than his own, you know, or his ad administration even almost? Yeah. Hearing him say that, I forget exactly what he said. I think it was something along the lines of like my voice in that area would be more powerful than mm -hmm. his. And I was like, ah, um, I don't know about that, <laughs> Mr. President. But it was such an honor to hear that. And I mean. I think, it, it, again, it was like a reminder of what I want to do and, and the message that I want to put out because I understand that not just me, but social media has given so many people, like all of us can, can use it now to have a voice in a way that I don't think we ever could years ago. Like social media allows you to instantly connect with people all around the world. And if I'm going to do that, then why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I spread a positive message? Why would I use that for, for negative energy? So uh, it, it was really, really encouraging to hear that. Um, and you've been lauded by so many publications. I mean, earlier before it was mentioned uh, Forbes, and you know, twice in, twice in a row you were uh, mentioned by Time Magazine as the uh, most influential teen in the world, uh, two years in a row. How does it feel having such a a positive sort of image in the in the media. The media seems to really love you. How did how do you deal with that? Uh, it's crazy. Again, I think it's just because this was none of it was not my intention going into it. So whenever things like that come up, I'm just like, what, you guys, <laughs> you're too nice. Um, no, it's it it is really cool though, and I think it's just once again an example that so many so many people can do it because I think. Growing up, I never thought that I would be able to do some of these things, and, and I always thought that I'd have to go through someone else to get there. Like, you know, auditioning, or, or like, I, I think that's what I love about social media, is that you can do it all on your own, and you can build your own brand, and you can build your own empire now. Like, you can start now, and no one can tell you that you can't, and it's all in the audience's hands. And, and that's why I'm so grateful for my audience, and why I think of them as my family, is because they're literally the ones that like brought me to this point if they weren't engaging and, and if they weren't interacting with with me and, and watching what I'm putting out, then it really wouldn't happen. Um, so it, I think it's a combined effort of the creator and the audience, and I think it's really beautiful. Did you ever think that that the ten, your 10-year-old self would ever see yourself right now in this position that you're, you're in, you know, having just you know, succeeded in what completely in what you in what you wanted to achieve. No, not at all. Like, <laughs> like I said, growing up, I was probably the most shy kid. I would like hide behind my mom. I didn't like making new friends. I didn't. I didn't like talking. Like, I was just so ashamed of my own opinions, and I didn't think that they mattered. And I was so afraid of sounding stupid or embarrassing myself, even in like the smallest social settings. And so, stepping out of my comfort zone that one time just changed so much. And I think we also forget a lot that a simple decision, like starting a YouTube channel seemed like, oh, I'll, you know, maybe I'll start one. Like it's, at the time, it seemed like such a simple, like casual decision to make, but I didn't realize what an impact it would have. And now it's grown to leaps and bounds. I mean, you have over 2 billion views on YouTube alone. Um, 
Did you did you ever think it would become this successful when you started? I mean, did you ever think it would become to get to you know you're one of the top stars on YouTube now? You know, you're you're the face of the campaign and everything. How does it feel having two billion views? Uh, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> uh, I think, like I keep saying, I think it was just not focusing so much on that and not. Obviously, it feels great, and it's so cool to know that that many people are interested. Mm. Sometimes I'm like, why? <laughs> but it's it's really cool. I think. Also, being a creator in any way, I, YouTube, and they're also, you know, just being an artist, there are a lot of things that you have to go through, and I faced a lot of challenges personally. I think it's because being an artist, you're so connected emotionally to your work, so it's really easy to um, feel down or get offended in certain scenarios, and I think that being on YouTube for so long has made me learn a lot about myself. And like I was speaking to earlier, what being a creator means to me is just like doing what I love and challenging myself creatively because sometimes, you know, I'll put out something that I spent so long on that I'm really proud of and sometimes it doesn't do as well as something that's like a little bit more trendy and I take it personally because I'm so emotionally connected to it. Things like that I've had to overcome and I've, I've had to, it's just taught me so much about myself and I feel like yes, this is my career, but also I feel like I'm just such a, a better person and I've grown so much as a person because of this job. And yeah, like you said earlier, you're about to come up on your 10 year, no, not 10 year anniversary, right? In about nine. a week, nine year anniversary. Nine. Oh, yeah. in a week? No. Why yeah. do you know that? I don't. <laughs> uh, I did, I didn't. Well, I am a journalist. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of my job. But uh, so you had obviously like a really, a really long career on YouTube. And I was just wondering, like, what, are, what are some of the ups and downs you've, uh, you've run into during that time? A lot. A lot. A lot of uh, self-doubt. Mm -hmm. I think all creators can relate to that. A lot of, you know, is this good enough? This isn't good enough. Um, and, and just feeling being easier on myself and filling my head with positive thoughts. It's a lot of like psychological mm. things that I think are probably the biggest thing to overcome in this type of job. Right, because you're like a one-man team, so right. yeah, it's all on you, essentially. Yeah, it's you and the guy upstairs in your head, you know, having an argument with, like, with one another. Um, so you also have two channels that you run, though. So you have your lifestyle, and then you have your sort of personal sort of vlog and stuff. I was wondering, how do you split your time between the two? Uh, well, the second channel, I, it's kind of, it doesn't really have a schedule, right. uh, so it's kind of whenever I really want to. I think the main channel is more of what I've always been more focused on, and the second channel is kind of like fun stuff, or if it's like vlogs or something random that I wouldn't put on the main channel, I'd put that on the second one. Uh, so mainly it's, I, I focus on the first channel, and that's the one that, you know, I've always kind of been a little bit more focused on, but it's nice to have the second one if there's something that's like, you know, just not as high production or like a little silly, then I can mm -hmm. post it there. Right. What, what made you want to start your second channel? At the time, I think I just wanted kind of a separation mm -hmm. for the life stuff and the lifestyle stuff. Mm -hmm. But now, I, I, I don't know, I've kind of even combined them a little bit on the main channel. Right. So I would say the second channel more than anything. Right. Um, what led you to want to write uh, Make Your Mind Up, My God, to Finding Your Own Style, Life, and Motivation? Because now you've branched out to actually to, you know, writing books and stuff. So what, what made you want to do that? I wanted to write the book because I, I consider myself to be pretty personal in my videos, and I, and I do show my life, and I show things that I'm loving, and I show who I am and my personality. But I, I had this urge to kind of open up more and talk about things that were a little bit more personal. And like I've spoken about my bullying experience, I've spoken about self-love and, and personal things, but I really wanted to just like unleash it. And so a book just seemed like kind of the go-to thing to do. So I spent a year on it and it's kind of a combination of what you would see on my channel. So there's like how I work out and like recipes and style tips and what I wear here and there but then there's also more heavy stuff and I talk about I go in depth on stories from when I was bullied as a kid I go in depth on um, body image body confidence what I've learned about that what self-love means to me uh, self-acceptance and that I think is one of my favorite parts in the book because you know it's like we all struggle with with self-confidence at some point, and, and I still do. Mm -hmm. And to be able to open up about that was probably one of my favorite things. And I think 
I also love that that's, I would say, what I got the biggest response from when I put the book out was so many people saying, like, you really helped me with my confidence with this and, and my thoughts on body image and, and everything because I was really able to just open up about that. So it was a lot more of an intimate um, sort of... Exp I was working out and I was doing all these things, but I was doing it for the wrong reason and I wasn't truly happy. Like, even though I looked the way I wanted to look, it wasn't actually the way that I wanted to look. It was the way that I was kind of told to be. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't feel good. And so I started kind of listening to myself more and like, how do I want to look? What do I like, regardless of what people are saying I should look like? And and I felt so much more love for myself and, and so much more love for my body and just understanding that like, it's so cheesy, but it's like, I really do have like one body and this is mine and I want to respect it. And it's like, I'm not entitled to, you know, like, I kind of look at life as a gift and, and this, like I'm so lucky to be alive and to have a body. So like, how dare I disrespect this gift that was given to me? Uh, so I talk about things like that, that are just like a little bit more personal that I wouldn't really talk about in my videos. And uh, that's the stuff that really gets me excited and I love to share with people, so. Do you have any plans to continue writing? Possibly, I think it was, it was a long experience. It was so fun, but it was definitely a lot of work and uh, took away from some of the other things that I was doing. So I feel like I'm definitely open to it because there's a lot more I would like to share and I have some more ideas. If I was to put out another book, it would definitely be a little different. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, possibly, but definitely later down the road. If you had to, off the top of your head, choose a topic that you would write about now, would it be something completely different or would it be in the same vein? Mm, I don't know. Maybe. I honestly would probably focus more on the personal stuff. I just love self-help books. I have so many. <laughs> so it would probably be just more focused on that, minus kind of all the lifestyle stuff that was in the first one. So uh, in, that, in that same vein, you've done so much with your career. You've done YouTube, you've done fashion, you've done books, you've done music, you've done so much. I feel like the only thing left now is like film. Um, do you have any aspirations or hopes to some and someday uh, delve into that too? I mean, I would love to. It's something that I've definitely been interested in. I think there's so many things that I'm interested in and that's what I love about being a YouTuber is that you kind of have the freedom to, to try everything. Mm -hmm. Like I started with makeup and that was all I did. And now it's like I've done music and I've done dancing and you know, fashion and all of these things. So. I would 100% want to get into it. I think it's if the opportunity is right and if it makes sense, then I will. And I, it, it would definitely be a little different for me because I don't have a lot of experience in that area, but I always find that when I challenge myself and do something out of my comfort zone, I learn so much about myself, so 